want to worship. We are glad that you are tuning in with us. Um, a reminder or an announcement that at Faith, we will be having a special congregational meeting on August 14th, immediately following worship, so that we can make some decisions about updating our fire alarm system and our security system. This is being uh, a requirement from the local fire inspector, and we need to have congregational approval for those expenses. Uh, we hope to be able to offer a Zoom link that day for those who might not be able to join us in person. We continue this morning with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience, and give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the 18th chapter of Genesis. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin! I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And the Lord said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again Abraham spoke to the Lord, Suppose forty are found there. The Lord answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. 
Then Abraham said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose thirty are found there. The Lord answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. Abraham said, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. The Lord answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then Abraham said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. The Lord answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from the second chapter of Colossians. As you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with the growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to them, 
When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, and my children are in bed with me. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there any among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake? instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Aunt Eunice picked me up as usual that day. I had spent the morning detasseling with another farm nearby. I was staying with Roe and Eunice for the summer so that I could work as a detasseler. Normally we would go back to the farm and I would shower and clean up eat a snack, and then take it easy for the rest of the day. Take a nap, relax, maybe help Eunice in the kitchen. But not that day. As soon as we pulled in the lane, I could see that something was up. Uncle Rose's truck was out in the south pasture, and he was out there near the garden doing something. Aunt Eunice parked the van in the shed, and we got out and said, don't worry about cleaning up just yet. We have work to do. We walked out to where Ro was sitting on the tailgate of his truck, and I could see it. Sweet corn. The bed of the truck was heaped 
full of freshly picked sweet corn. And as I walked up, Rose said, oh, okay, now that you're back, I'll get to work helping Eunice. I need you to shuck all of this. I just stood there. Now, I had shucked corn before, but maybe only five or six ears at a time, or even maybe a dozen. But I was a city kid for the most part, and never had I had to deal with that much sweet corn. I sat on the tailgate and I started, started to shuck. Now again, I was 13 and so I'm pulling one or two pieces of stalk off the corn at a time. And Uncle Ro looks at me and says, oh, I will be here all day if you do it like that. Here, like this. And he picked up an ear of corn and said, and showed me and one, two, three, boom, it was shucked. Corn was clear. And I said, okay, I'll try. And I set to work again. This time pulling larger pieces. And Rose said, all right, you're getting the hang of it. And he left me to go do something else. And I looked at the pile in the truck bed and I sighed. That's a lot of corn. I have no idea how many bushels, how much corn was there that day. But I kept thinking, how long is this gonna take me? How many ears of corn are here? How am I ever going to finish this? I had no idea. But I did know that I had one choice, shut the corn. Get it done. So I did. I grabbed the ears and pulled at the stalks and pulled off the silks and took care of it. And I tried Rose's way, and even though his hands are far bigger, far stronger than mine, pretty sure I got the hang of it. Three good swipes, and I'd have that ear clean. And I was doing pretty well. Pull, 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 wipe off those silks, toss it in the laundry basket, pick up the next one, keep going. On and on, and I had a pretty good rhythm going. And pretty soon, I could see that pile decreasing. And the elation in me rose as I started to count. I could count the remaining years where we're down. 20, 12, 5, last one, woohoo! And I peeled that last one and I handed it off. Now, Rome had been standing not too far away, back by the house, washing off all the ears of corn by the hose. He was taking everything that I had freshly shucked, and he was washing it there to get it ready to take inside. And I walked up and said, I'm finished, and I handed him that last basket of corn, and he said, good, you can finish up here. You can start washing what's left. I'll go in and help Eunice in the kitchen. And that elation inside me just flew away with the breeze. So I picked up the scrub brush and I looked at the baskets of corn that I had shucked. And I turned down the garden hose and I jumped into that icy water and I started to scrub. And that water was cold. Even though it was a hot day, I stood there, freezing hands, scrubbing corn, basket after basket of fresh corn, scrubbing, washing, rinsing, fingers growing numb, trying to pull all the silks off. After more than an hour of washing, I finished with all the ears, and I carried that last basket into the kitchen where Ro and Eunice stood working, blanching and cutting and packaging the corn for freezing for the winter. Needless to say, they had more work for me that day. Looking back, I know that I learned far more than just how to prepare and freeze sweet corn, learn more about than just how to shuck an ear quicker. 
I learned that day about persistence. I learned how to keep at it, how to keep going, how to keep working when you really want to just slow down or stop. When you don't know how to keep going, when you want to just give up. Persistence. In our scriptures, especially our scripture today, we hear about persistence. Jesus uses several stories and gives many images of persistence as he talks about the love of God. Especially in Luke's telling of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we hear about a widow appearing, appealing to a judge, a woman sweeping her house frantically to search for a coin, a shepherd searching for a lost sheep. In our story today of a friend knocking on the door in the middle of the night, a friend waking up the neighbor, a friend urgently sharing his needs and his requests with the next person. Now the story sounds strange to us who live in this part of the world in this time in history, but it's even more odd when we consider the realities of food in that culture in that time of the world. People in Jesus' time, they didn't keep bread for the next day or for the day after. One made enough for their household, for themselves, for the moment, for a meal or two. That's why it was called daily bread. And no one would have three extra loaves just sitting around in the house overnight. It, it wouldn't keep. So to ask someone if they had it would be outlandish. And yet the friend asks. The friend keeps asking, persisting in that request. Jesus, as he's explaining to the disciples and those around him how to pray, how to pray to this God, this loving God who is like this loving Father, Jesus is emphasizing that this God to whom we pray, this God is one who would rouse from sleep in the middle of the night, who would get up and do what's needed to answer that request. Even if that meant having to bake bread in the middle of the night, putting everything together by, by the light of a small lamp, God is there to hear our persistent requests. Jesus emphasizing that we should be bold, be persistent in our prayers. Pray in this way. Our Father in heaven, give us this, these requests. Hear our prayers. For you are the Holy One. You are our dear Father who sees all, who provides what we need. You are the one who promises to love and care for us, who would never respond to our basic needs with, with danger. Like a child asking for a fish or an egg, you would never give us something that would intentionally harm us, a snake or a scorpion. You would only intentionally give us what is good. It's never your will, O oh God, to cause us pain or suffering. So yes, O oh God, we, we will pray to you, pray to you, as you are like that heavenly loving Father who would never hurt us. We will pray with boldness, with persistence, day after day. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? What Jesus instructs, ask and you shall receive, knock and the door shall be opened, seek and you shall find. It's so easy. And yet I confess that it's not so easy, that I, I struggle with, with these words of Jesus. I struggle sometimes even to preach about it 
because I'm aware that for every persistent person whose prayer was answered in the way that they had hoped, there's another whose persistent prayer was not answered as they would have wished. I know far too many stories of suffering and struggle and heartbreak and loss. People who did not get the remedy, the healing, the protection that they might have wanted. Now I know that that was not God's will, that God did not cause that for those people. But God certainly didn't stop it either, healing or changing. I know sometimes it's just not that simple that we ask and it's granted. I know that God is not some kind of vending machine that we insert our prayers and we hit the right button and out pops exactly what we desire. But I do know that what Jesus urges us today to be bold, to be persistent in prayer, I know that this ongoing action is far more than just those one or two unanswered prayers. I know that this action of praying again and again of the persistence, that that, that is what changes us. That that is what develops this relationship with God. That this boldness, this persistence, this continuation, that it is this gift that God gives us to be in relationship with God, to share everything that we might feel or need or experience in this world, that God is there for us, and that God does hear all things. Jesus is right. Ask, seek, knock, be bold, be persistent, because our prayers are heard. Our prayers are answered, not always in the way we would want, but always in the way that God knows that is needed, or in the way that God knows God will be with us. We are invited today to continue to pray in this way, to pray the way that Jesus instructs us, to pray with boldness, confidence with persistence because we know that it is in this prayer that we draw close to God that we experience this love that God gives us in Jesus Christ that it is in this prayer that we are changed and loved and forgiven so we pray boldly we pray with persistence for that is what Jesus tells us. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near the Holy One in prayer. Rooted and built up in Christ, we pray for the church, emboldened church leaders to take risks for the sake of the gospel, and equip the baptized to proclaim your extravagant love for the whole world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in the works of your hands, we pray for the natural world. Make rivers and lakes, oceans and all waterways sparkle with your radiance. Protect water sources and strengthen those who defend them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Interceding on behalf of the vulnerable, we pray for the peoples of the world. Inspire all rulers and governing authorities with your justice. Guide the work of legislators and public officials that they advocate for the well-being of those they serve. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Persistent in prayer, we pray for our neighbors in need. To all who have hunger, give daily bread. To all who have bread, give hunger for justice. Open us to the cries of those who suffer, especially Francis, Carol, and Debbie. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for this congregation, for Faith and St. James. Bless the prayer and fellowship ministries in our places. Call us together in times of prayer and blessing, trouble and sorrow, in your holy name. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised with him to new life, give thanks for your saints who rest in your eternal presence. Join our voices with theirs as we sing of your great glory. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of this peace with those among you. saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Trust in this gift of the body and blood of Jesus given for you. For wherever we are, wherever we are gathered, God is there. God of steadfastness and encouragement, grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.